When it comes to 1950s dress patterns, few come to mind faster than Butterick 6015. This pattern was reportedly so easy, it earned the nickname the walkaway dress, as you could, quote, start it after breakfast and then walk away in it for a luncheon. Reportedly, sales of this pattern were so great at one point, Butterick stopped entire factories producing any pattern but this one. So needless to say, when the original came up on eBay, I was on that faster than folks jumping on a bandwagon where you assume that bus 30 is literally the average for a 1950s lady. So after acquiring this one on eBay, I realized I didn't have the reproduction because I don't make reproductions, I make originals. So I had to go to one of my other pattern sellers to uh, acquire the reproduction. Needless to say, now that I'm armed with both the vintage and the reproduction, we're gonna go ahead and roast the crap out of this thing now, shall we? And how we're gonna do that today is we are going to start off with the envelope itself. How do they differ? Then we're going to go into the instructions and really look at what the original instructions say and how they say it and the new ones. And again, I'm not gonna read through every single instruction because I feel like that would be not helpful. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do an overall shot so that you guys can see the differences. And if you'd like to pause and screen grab, I'm gonna do my best to keep everything in focus this time. Sorry about that. And last, but certainly not least, and probably the reason you're all here, we're gonna lay out the pattern pieces and by golly, we're gonna go line for line to see how they differ. And I don't think it's gonna go well. But either way, grab your coffee and let's sit back and get ready to roast some things. At least they started off better than the Simplicity did. I personally enjoy how they kept the original line drawings from the original onto the replication. I also appreciate how they went ahead and go ahead and put the year on the front of it. That's always nice because you can't always find the years in this range of Butterick unless you have the catalog and you know a couple of people. And just so that we're completely clear and honest, we see here that there's a bus 32, which is the size 14. Now, on this one, we have a size range from eight to 14, which does mean we will get close to our 32, but it's not going to be exact because in the modern envelopes, they go from 31 and a half, 32 and a half, 34. So we're not gonna have as precise a lineup this go around. So this time I'm gonna bust out my trusty tape measure so that it's not just a scale difference in between the eight and the 10. Now let's look at the backs. And of course, following the true vintage pattern, you can actually see the pattern layout here on the back, which is always nice. Has your yardage, your notions, and your sizing here all on the back, just kind of a general easy access as well as the suggested fabrics, as opposed to the new envelope which only has the sizing chart, a description, a vague mention. We got the fabrics here in tiny writing, you have the notions here in tiny writing, and well, the sizes are up on the flap, so if the flap's gotten torn away, good luck knowing what size you're supposed to have. Instead of a nice pattern piece layout, they opt for this weird, like, half the constructed layout. Sure, why not? But now, let's look at the instructions. Now for me, looking at the vintage instructions is pretty simple, but that's only because I look at them quite often, especially when I'm checking for pieces in vintage patterns that I sell. So what you can see here is you have basically the same cover front button, black and white. Then you have the simple steps as far as what you're looking for as like a before you sew situation. And then you've got the diagram of the pattern pieces again on this, which is why if your pattern is actually missing the envelope, it's not the end of the world for a vintage pattern because a, most of the information that you need is right on here except for yardage. And really for yardage, I typically just overestimate. So like, especially for my size, I don't assume I can do anything with less than about five and a half yards, but to each their own. I know a lot of people like the envelopes, but you really don't need them, especially with the vintage patterns because there's so much on here. Just a little hot tip from Stephanie. The bottom section just basically shows you layout on different fabrics. So you've got a 35 to 39 inch on this side for view A and for view B, you've got the 35 to 39 over here. As you can see during this time frame, they actually didn't give you the layout for 44 inch fabric. However, it was being made. They just didn't put it on here. Okay, great, moving on. All 
right, and the backside. Honestly, there is not a lot here, which is not surprising in a vintage pattern at all. But what you can see here is step one is just going ahead to attach that, step two, step three, and then down here by step four, you've already got your thing all together. Step five, six, seven, and eight. So from what I can see here, it seems pretty straightforward. Again, 1950s patterns kind of assume you have a lot of backlog of information already. So I always stress to make sure you have a proper period book to go along with it or a period PDF book to go along with it so that you're not getting confused when you see anything on here that you're like, what? Like the first time I did a rolled hem, I had no idea what I was doing. I still don't really know what I'm doing, but I attempt. Now for our modern one. Again, the upside is that there are only three pattern pieces here. So really how much can we actually screw it up? <sighs> Hopefully not that much. So again, we have the same kind of bland finished product line drawing. You have the back pieces. So now you actually get to see what their pieces look like. And uh, if I'm being honest, I'm already starting to see a problem. And then you have your body measurements here in case your envelope flap did get torn away. So that's good. They do put it in two locations. And then here you have, this is the modern basics of what you need to know, where they're telling you a little bit more instruction. Uh, they're also giving you what their arrows mean, which is sort of beyond the point because they also print it on the tissue paper. Personally, I don't think anyone reads this section. I could be wrong, but I also don't use modern patterns. So there's that. And then it sort of shows you how you lay it out again on your fabric. And this time they only give you 45 inch width. Oh, <laughs> they also give you 60. The other length that people tend to print them at. Just kidding. So we have version A down here in the bottom and we have version B up here in the top. And then we have yet more sewing instructions and a glossary. And then we start in on the instructions here. So you have dress A and B are going to be the same instructions apparently. And you go along this whole thing for hymns, bindings, finishes, all that jazz. From the get go, it doesn't look that different. Let's look at the back. And then on the back, we're seeing again, sort of basically similar things. Although they do give you much more detail as far as like, now you're encasing the neck and then you slip stitch and then you encase the sides and then you slip stitch and sure. I, I personally don't feel that necessarily is needed for a pattern. I could be wrong. It underestimates the actual people that are buying your patterns. You're assuming that they couldn't possibly figure out what stitch to use. So you're going to go ahead and tell them which stitch to use. And while I understand our home economic system is broken and we aren't really teaching these skills much anymore, I feel like that might be going one step too far. But again, if you disagree with me, which you are fair to do on this ye olde internet, uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments if you think I am incorrect and we can have a conversation and that is okay because good constructive conversation is encouraged on this channel. Now, once we get through all of our steps, which apparently for them, there are 23. And then we get into the section where I think that modern patterns actually are a little bit stronger, where they do include instructions in a different language. So here you can see they have everything again listed out in French. To wit, I say good on you, modern patterns. And now for the reason that I'm pretty sure you clicked on this video, Let's go ahead and lay those pattern pieces on top of one another and see how they did. And just to give the modern one a good strong shot, we're going to start with pattern piece number one. They just call it the front, which is excellent. Now the vintage one is labeled three front. So that's just a numbering thing. Who really gives a crap? It doesn't matter. They lift front to front. Great. Cool. Glad we can all agree that the front is actually the front. I didn't get my tape measure. Crap. I have 14 tape measures in this house and I can't find one when I need it. Love that. Okay, great. Now, tape measure. Excellent. All right, because we must remember the vintage is a bust 32. The modern will sit between a bust 31 and a half and a bust 32 and a half. So we're looking at the lines for eight and 10. 
And I'm already seeing things I don't like. Okay, we're lined up to about size eight. We should be right here between the eight and 10. Look at that deviation. Look at where the shoulder would fall versus where the shoulder is supposed to fall. The arm's eye. The ridiculous difference in the darting. Butterick, were you even trying? Were, were you even trying? Seriously, I wanna know. Look at this. What a ridiculous difference. No wonder people have such fit issues with your pattern. Vintage, I'm lined up on the outside. They kept the outside of the darting, but the vintage dart is much, much larger. So the vintage dart should be about an inch higher. It goes farther. There's a slash here instead of this weird cockamamie arms eye shenanigan that's happening here. The first dart goes of an extra inch and a half past it. The interior dart is an additional two and a half inches longer at the bottom. An inch and a quarter at the top. Good. Now again, I'm, a, I'm acknowledging that my pattern is supposed to be in between these two lines right here. It's not, it's not even close. It is an extra half inch at points outside of the line. And look at that difference. I am lined up on my center front fold. I am not adjusting this. And look at how much longer. This pattern is an extra three and a half inches longer, which is why you'll see in some of these videos where people are like, wow, this is a short dress. Yes, yes it is, because yours is supposed to be another three and a half inches longer before you hem it. Oh yeah, I'm seeing exactly why people had problems now. All right, so cute. The front was a disaster. What? What? Oh, oh, don't lick my face, please. The back. Uh, all right, well, we're gonna do it the same way we did last time. So we're gonna put the modern on bottom and the vintage on top because vintage is always on top. Hey, you, I need my other hand. I need my other hand now. Again, I don't care that they're different numbers. That doesn't bother me. However, that point lines up. The neckline is a total nightmare. Okay, not a total nightmare, that was the other one. But the vintage definitely cuts down lower by about a half inch. Yep. I've lined it up right there along the back. Do, 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 do. I have lined up the bottom corner. The darting actually, shockingly, isn't that bad. So the dart for the vintage is only a quarter inch shy of the modern. That's actually not bad. Here's where we get into the problems. Well, part two of the problems. You can see here, this is the modern or the vintage dropping down. And then I don't know what's happening here because that's the line for the modern. That's the line for the vintage. That That's not even remotely the same angle. And to continue the not the same angle tactic, let's just take a look at that arm's eye, shall we? Completely freaking different. Well, there's only one more piece left to go. Ah, the skirt. How hard can it be to replicate a skirt? So obviously, if you can see here, the modern is, is gigantic. It's an entire half of the skirt, right? So you're only supposed to cut two. I, I don't even know what's happening. Yes, there's a dog in the background. We're just gonna go with it. Uh, I don't even know what's happening here. This is the modern waist. That's the vintage waist. Modern, vintage. For scale. Like, I don't even really know how to tell you properly that this is a disaster. Like this isn't even remotely close to the correct linings as far as the lay of the skirt goes. No wonder the drape on this one is so much more shallow. This tells me that immediately. That's why. This one is gonna have such a better drape because there's so much more room for the fabric to flow. This one, they just like, meh, 
it's fine. We're just gonna cut it off. It's cool. Oh, wait, that's not the best part. Remember how I told you in a lot of the reviews, people were saying that it was a lot shorter. Well, they weren't wrong. Five inches. It's a five inch difference. So for all of you that made this, that it was a lot shorter, this is why. That's just crazy. And it goes across the entire thing. The whole thing is that short. So remember that time that I told you I was gonna be nicer and I was gonna be more gentle as far as acknowledging that I had a slightly different pattern size. Well, apparently that didn't mean dick to these people. Again, I'm under the assumption that they took a modern drafts person with modern blocks and said, dear person that makes like $10 an hour or less, please go ahead and replicate this really intricate pattern from the 50s. That was touted as one of our best sellers that we shut down other factories to only produce this pattern for. No, no, let's not take the time and actually buy the actual pattern so we can properly replicate it for modern audiences. No, 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 no. Let's wing it. So what are my thoughts? My thoughts are that there is a special place for patterns like this. There's time out. And then there's what this pattern deserves. It had it coming. It had it coming. It only had itself to blame. For those who've been there. For those who've sown that. You're wishing you would have done the same. <laughs> That was for all of you that have hated this project, have stressed over it, have torn it up, have thrown it in the corner into timeout. That was for you. Well, folks, I do distinctly hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, despite the reckless abandonment and destruction of property on my end, which don't worry, I already bought it, so it really doesn't matter. If this video brought you any level of enjoyment, or release a frustration from when you made a modern pattern, please do feel free to share it with your friends because the whole intent of this video is to show you exactly how the reproduction patterns don't exactly line up to the vintage ones so that people that really want to sew vintage don't get discouraged from the get-go. So make sure that you're sharing it with your friends and family so that they too can learn the differences between vintage versus reproduction. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you let me know down in the comments which pattern you want to see me do next Maybe not the destruction part, but the actual part where I measure it and tell you the differences. Making sure to click the like button, being sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos from me, and making sure to push the bell button so that way YouTube will actually let you know the next time I do an upload in your subscription feed or directly to your little happy cellular device. I hope this video gave you the catharsis that you needed in case you ever made this dress. And we'll see y'all next time. So when the opportunity came to buy the original pattern on eBay for a shockingly low amount, needless to say, I was on that like a metal zipper with wax on it. That's a terror. no, don't use that. Needless to say, I was on that faster than me at a state sale with a pile of patterns. <laughs> so when the opportunity came to, God, can you tell it's been like a month since I recorded anything? Cause I can. Because coffee fixes everything. Is BB-8 a mess? Yes, he is. So we're gonna do what we did with the other one. That's not helpful. So in today's episode of Vintage versus Reproduction, nothing goes that way, everything goes this way. Should also note that I do not condone actually destroying patterns, except this once. That way, <laughs> I haven't done this in forever. Oh God, okay, putting it out, putting it out.